This is a underwater video from the uh, first time I put the paddle wheel sensor uh, in the water. Uh, I'm just applying power to the engine right now and the, uh, the engine pylon is in the lower left corner. It's currently rotated as I'm in a uh, hard left turn and in a few seconds it'll straighten itself out uh, so it'll be right behind the, the uh, sensor. Um, I'm showing you this video uh, which was originally shot at 120 frames per second at uh, quarter speed um, so it's easy to so the uh, the paddle wheel itself is uh, fairly distinct and not blurred uh, in the image. One of my main concerns at this point was the close proximity of the sensor and the engine pylon uh, when you're going straight and whether that was going to affect the information I was getting out of it. It turns out that I was getting good information as long as I was going straight but in uh, corners the, uh, the prop moving water across the sensor uh, would cause it to uh, uh, read inaccurately. That wasn't really a problem since my real interest is uh, when I'm out trolling and most of the time you're trolling in a straight line so that wasn't going to be a problem. Um, I initiated this project because even though I have GPS speed uh, which is speed over ground uh, when you're trolling in current what you really want to know is speed in the water and paddle wheel sensors will give you that information. All in all, it turned out to be uh, successful at, uh, uh, especially at, at this point when everything's nice and clean and the sensor's nice and clean, and it worked down to very low, fairly low speeds, uh, down to about 1.2 miles per hour or so. Uh, after I started using it out and fishing in this Oslo, it started getting uh, dirtier and uh, it became fairly unreliable below two miles an hour. Now I did not attempt to clean it uh, during fishing season but uh, and when I did pull the boat out of the water it was fairly dirty uh, with scum so it uh, may have been uh, may work uh, at lower speeds if I would clean it on a regular basis. However this season I ended up figuring out how to properly use 360 flashers and completely converted to them over the course of uh, the fishing season which was for me uh, about four weeks and in that time I had 23 hookups and only one was with a triangle flasher so I'm pretty much sticking with 360 flashers from this point on and that being the case you don't need any electronic speed sensing at all because the tip of your rod tells you everything you need to know about the speed uh, that you should be running. Uh, with the 360 flasher you're looking for a uh, rotation rate between uh, once per second to maybe uh, once every two seconds and your rod tip will sh give you that information. So setting your speed is just a matter of watching your rod tip and you don't need anything else. Here is the paddle wheel speed sensor, this device right here. This is a uh, Garmin product that I uh, found online for $25. Um, there was no spec sheet with it whatsoever. It's, it's just a advertised as a four-pin Garmin speed sensor. Um, so I had to kind of figure out uh, how it was wired and uh, how I needed to power it, but that turned out to be pretty easy. It's only three wires in the cable, red, green, and brown. I assume red and green were plus and minus and that turned out to be true and brown the signal and I first tried powering it up with a 3.3 volt signal and that worked or power supply I should say and that gave me a nice clean signal so I, can't, I didn't try anything beyond 3.3 volts uh, when it spins it produces a square wave of a frequency of uh, 5.6 hertz per knot uh, which is pretty much the standards for almost all the uh, paddle wheel sensor I've, I've seen uh, and uh, this one corresponded to that, uh, to that standard. Uh, I had to invent a mount for it. This is meant to be mounted on a transom and it has a bracket for that but obviously I don't have that so I've designed and 3D printed this guy right here that mounted to my existing metal framework for my fairing and uh, it took me a few iterations to get all the angles and uh, 
dimensions are quite right, but now it works quite well. Uh, it's designed so that uh, when it's operating, this uh, bottom surface is even with the bottom of the boat. Uh, so it has a good flow across it. I actually did, but when I try to uh, bring this up on the dock, this would be uh, the weight of the boat would be sitting on this. So I designed it so that it will rotate up out of the way uh, when I want to uh, bring the boat up onto the dock. Uh, to keep it from doing that, when I'm uh, running the water, actually just trolling it wants to stay here. But if I try to go pretty as fast as I can, it tends to move up. So. So I designed it with a little keyway here and a key that goes inside and that then locks it in place. And so I've been operating it with that key in there and then when I get back to the dock and want to pull out of the water, uh, I uh, just uh, push it out of the way, it, uh, that can rotate back up.